Yeah, well, it was definitely hard to break it. I was on the city council for six years before that, and I'd like to think that the reason why so many people supported me is because I'm out and about and they know who I am. And even though I was born in New York and uh, you know lived there for a number of, of, of years, I yeah you know, I became a Texan as soon as I could. And when I went to college, <laughs> I came back as soon as I could. <laughs> I love I love I love Texas. I mean, I absolutely adore the people down here. I think we. You know, we are doing something right. You look at our economy compared to the rest of the country, you know, during the worst of times, and we're doing great. You know, people are moving here from, from New York, they're moving here from California, they're moving here from all around the country. And uh, we definitely have that independent streak, which I really appreciate. Well, our great contributor, Tamara Colbert, uh, in Texas now for a few years and, and, and loving it as well. So we've uh, certainly yeah, heard that. Was. And, you know, we know you're all Texan all the way now, but you can't take the New York out of the girl all the way. I heard earlier in our conversation <laughs> that yada, yada, yada uh, comment you made, and that's got to be a tip of the hat to Jerry Seinfeld. So I'm going to go with that at least, Mayor. And uh, so what's going on in Irving right now on a positive note? What's what, what's happening? Well, we're finally getting some rain, right, after having kind of a dry summer. What's happening? We uh, we, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago, I guess, uh, about a week and a half ago. We had a ton, ton of nonprofits come together. We had 65 uh, groups from across the country, religious affiliates, nonprofits come across. Uh, we had a mayor's roundtable about how we can help those most in need in the city. And I'll tell you, it was one of the most uplifting meetings that I have seen in the last almost 12 years that I've been elected. Uh, we, we saw people across the country, uh, across the city come together and figure out how we could all work together to help those, especially during the holiday seasons uh, and, and throughout the rest of the year. Um, we are having double-digit property growth. Uh, you know, we look at our valuations here. We are growing leaps and bounds. Uh, we are right by DFW Airport, location, location, location. People want to move here. Uh, we have Fortune 500 companies. We've got six Fortune 500 companies now within our city. We've got single-family homes that are being built. We've got retail that are coming here. We have got uh, uh, businesses that are moving here, corporate um, offices that are being built. It is a phenomenal time to live in Texas. It's a, even a better time to live in Irving. And I could not be more more proud, more humble, and more honored to be the mayor of this awesome city. Well, she's doing it the right way, the old school way, and the way you're supposed to do it, a public servant who's actually serving the people and doing what's right for those who are her boss, not the other way around that we see so many uh-huh. times in Washington and in our state capitals. Mayor Beth Van Dyne, thank you so much for being with us. It was great to talk to you today. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You take care. For more on Mayor Van Dyne, head to BethForIrving.com. That's Beth, F-O-R, Irving.com. This past week, a very happy Thanksgiving wish from Governor Palin. Palin writing on Facebook, give thanks. And she also posted a great picture of an American family praying around their Thanksgiving table. Thanksgiving, one of the many amazing holidays featured in Palin's new book, Sweet Freedom, a devotional. After a man murdered multiple people in Colorado this past week, Governor Palin spoke out on social media, writing, quote, Our prayers are for Colorado Springs and the families of the three killed there yesterday, including a heroic police officer who put his life on the line for others. Such a horrible, evil act perpetrated by a deranged man who'd been repeatedly investigated by law enforcement over the years. Senseless acts of violence involving stabbings, beatings, shootings, etc. are equally evil, abhorrent, unacceptable. The evidence isn't all gathered, but it appears yet another criminal mind ignored all sensibilities and all laws to fulfill his mission to kill. Pray that our culture receives wisdom in dealing with any dark intention that is manifested in ugly violence using any weapon, and that glorification of death and violence using any weapon is wholly condemned. We must have a collective commitment to reversing the trajectory we're on towards creating a hard-hearted, selfish civilization. Yesterday's crime was so wrong, so terrible, so tragic, as is every deadly act of violence we sufferably witness every day here and around the world. May God comfort Colorado Springs victims, unquote. We echo the governor's sentiments and send prayers to all those affected as well. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page, follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA, and check out sarahpack.com. Now, the Palin Update with Kevin Shola presents Liberty and Legacy. Here's Tamara Colbert. As we celebrate Thanksgiving this week, I am so excited to share with you that I am the 12th generation great-granddaughter of Captain Miles Standish. Upon learning this some years ago, Thanksgiving in America's history became a living and relevant experience through the legacy of my family tree. 
I get to talk with you every single week about liberty and legacy, and I do so because they are both vitally important to our children and those who are coming after us. Our legacy in America is incredibly blessed, and I am so thankful every day for this. Because learning about one's legacy has changed me. It has changed my family. I feel empowered as though the fight for liberty that I engage in every day and the full, which is requiring the full restoration of constitutional values rests solely on my shoulders. This week, as I was thinking about the 152nd anniversary of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, I also learned that after George Washington, President Lincoln had another Thanksgiving holiday, and that was on November 28, 1861 where he ordered all the government departments closed in this celebration. But it wasn't yet a national holiday and didn't become so until a couple years later when he got a letter written by Sarah Josepha Hale. She asked President Lincoln, quote, you may have observed that for some years past there's been an increasing interest in our land to have the Thanksgiving held on the same day in all the states. It now needs national recognition and authoritative fixation to become permanently an American custom and institution, end quote. Because prior to this, every state in America got to schedule its own Thanksgiving holiday and they were all at different times and most of them only happened in New England which would seem logical. So President Lincoln responded directly to Mrs. Hale's request, and he did so immediately, unlike his predecessors that she had been bugging. They ignored her altogether. But in, in her letter to Lincoln, she specifically mentioned that she had been advocating this for 15 years. Lincoln's proclamation was actually drafted by the Secretary of State William Seward at the time, and it does set apart the last Thursday in November. Do not be fooled by so many progressives today who are pushing to not just remove Thanksgiving, but they're pushing to remove God-based anything. So that we in America, we are being told that America's incredible and auspicious and blessed beginning with our pilgrims who came here for one reason doesn't exist. What is that reason? They came here for religious freedom. It is undeniable, and I'm sorry, and the left can do whatever they want, but it is up to us to protect that legacy and to champion that legacy. I want to read a couple of sentences about this proclamation that Lincoln ended up filing. Quote, the years drawing toward its close and has been filled with blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come. Others have been added, which are so extraordinary in nature, they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart, which is habitually insensible to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. Can you imagine Obama writing that? I can't. This last paragraph is so important. No human counsel hath devised nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God who while dealing with us in anger for our sins hath nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also, also those who are at sea or sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Think about this. I can't imagine President Obama writing, saying, or even thinking these thoughts for any holiday. Friends, do not be discouraged, but be encouraged. Thanksgiving, please solemnly remember to focus on what is important. It is our country, our family, our legacy, and the bounty and blessings that this incredible nation has provided to all of us in the name of liberty. I want to hear your liberty and legacy appreciation and what you're thankful for. As always, you know you can tweet me at Tamara Colbert, hashtag Mama Grizzly Radio. Have a blessed Thanksgiving holiday. I'm Tamara Colbert for Mama Grizzly Radio. 
Tamara Colbert in Texas. Tune in for more Liberty and Legacy next week. And to learn about Convention of States, head to conventionofstates.com. Now our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. Tragedies give us an insight into the type of leadership that our country so desperately needs. One can listen to the responses of various leaders around the world and in our country and discern the truth. Of course, here at home, our president chose to chastise Republicans. Instead of pulling us together as a country to rise up and defeat terrorism, he chose his usual condescending elitist professorial lecture about how Republicans don't care about widows and orphans. Every time he has the opportunity to generate support and unity among Americans toward a common dangerous enemy, he chooses to divide and anger people. It is bewildering. It's sad and it's terribly destructive to our nation. He shows absolutely no respect to those who have legitimate concerns about the safety of our nation because we're letting in thousands of Syrian refugees. In contrast, the words of Bibi Netanyahu were strong and unifying. All terrorism must be condemned and fought equally with unwavering determination. It's only with this moral clarity that the forces of civilization will defeat the savagery of terrorism. And he added, an attack on any one of us should be seen as an attack on all of us. Unfortunately, President Obama lacks the moral clarity to even call these terrorists radical Islamic terrorism. If you can't even recognize the enemy, how do you defeat them? Whether he likes it or not, ISIS and other radical Islamic terrorists have declared war on America. So get with it, President Obama, and do your job as commander in chief. Quit fighting America. Americans want to win and will win the war on terror with or without you. This is Sarah Steelman for Mama Grizzly Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. The Palin Update, including Liberty and Legacy and Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download. So just head to MamaGrizzlyRadio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit MamaGrizzlyRadio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook and follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Tamara Colbert, and at Sarah underscore Steelman. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News, go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Sarah Steelman, Tamara Colbert, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Beth Van Dyne. And thank you for listening today. A special thanks to our sponsor, Narrowgate Security Agency. Visit Narrowgate.com. The Palin Update is produced by Lena Anderson, the Andy L. Kramer, and Lori Ann Lewis. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update right here on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.